Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 50 of your Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. Today's episode is gifts, the gifts from your ancestors. I think I've mentioned this several times. Um, if you're following me on Facebook, um, facebook.com forward slash that Michelle Wolf. You'll have heard me talking a lot about um, ancestral lineage work that I've been doing <clears throat> intensely. A couple of podcasts ago, I mentioned um, having d ha done some work with Heather Westmoreland, who's a healing medium. Um, you can find her on Facebook at Medium Heather Westmoreland. Can't remember the name of her website, dang it, right now. But anyway, you can... She's not too hard to find. If you uh, have trouble locating her, just send me a note and I'll hook you up. Um, the thing that I've been struggling with that a lot of us struggle with is we've inherited a, like a shit ton of pain. Pain that it doesn't really belong to us and yet it's a part of our DNA. So it's like um, inheriting the, you know, the old dusty suitcases of shit <laughs> from generations before <sighs> the sins of the father and whatnot I believe is a true statement it is visited upon the children not purposefully but just the nature of having a physical body that's made up of components that carry memory and experience um, when we have strong emotions attached to an experience, emotions create the imprint that, you know, stamp it on your memory. Very happy times and very painful times are much easier to remember just because those chemical, the chemical cocktail of that is like, it's what writes the memory on your DNA on your brain you could think of it as like the ink in the pen that emotions are the ink in the pen that create things that make them real and so many times we have patterns in our lives that make no sense or we enter into therapy or we go to coaching or we do lots of self-help explor exploration on our own and yet these patterns just go on and on and on. And in fact, the more you try and fail, the worse it gets for you personally. Because, you know, we're not, we, you know, we can't run into a brick wall forever. Once you've stamped all the brick prints on your forehead that you possibly can, you just run out of room. <laughs> and so then people give up and that's heartbreaking. And certainly many, many times I've wanted to give up on this stupid money journey <laughs> that, I, that I only now have budged. All the work I've done over the last few years, and especially this year with a, a team of women who've written books and hold courses and do teaching and offer their light to the world that you know, just continues to shine the way. I couldn't even list all the, I mean, there's a, a huge collection of women that have, you know, shepherded me knowingly or unknowingly through this year of determination to understand this money thing. Uh, well, and I should throw in Kyle C's. He's the one guy in the mix. <laughs> a bunch of women and Kyle. So the last piece of your journey is often the biggest one. And that for me has been ancestral work. And as I've undone it, I've seen ripple effects going through my mother and my sister and my daughter's lives. And my own life, of course. But when I was a trauma therapist, an EMDR therapist, there's a phenomenon, a phenomena, phenomena, da, 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 da. is that a Sesame Street song? <laughs> I don't know. 
oh my tangential brain um when we when you're doing EMDR which is eye movement desensitization and reprocessing which is a treatment for trauma one of the most well um that one of the most evidence based successful treatments for trauma which i often recommend to people over coaching like sometimes you just need to do the trauma stuff first and because coaching really is not designed for that but um when you're doing EMDR with people you know people come into therapy with pain right they're either forced into it or they they're voluntarily entering into it and i've worked with both um because something is terribly wrong and they can't fix it when something is hurting when you have a wound on your body when you've cut yourself or broken a bone you have to address the pain in some way before you can get to the cohesion of a healed after an, an outcome right so you wouldn't run around you know spewing blood from an injury and just thinking about oh I'm healed I'm healed I'm healed I'm just gonna affirm that until it's true <laughs> meanwhile you just bleed to death <laughs> right there are some things that we can affirm our way out of that we can do thought work and change and that's enough but there are other things especially lineage things that require more exploration and um, attention so you have to you know get the stitches to stop the bleeding to do the healing and you're doing both you're addressing the healing process while you're creating what your outcome is going to look like it's it's a multi-layered thing you might hear some clicking in the background because one of the cats found a bottle top and is having a great time with it in the kitchen. <laughs> and the kitchen's like, you know, 20 steps away from me because I live in such a teeny weeny house. So when we're doing this, when you come into therapy for trauma, and I'm finding this to be my experience with the lineage work, there's a lot of heavy stuff to move first. So I'll give me an example, and this is a composite. This isn't one client, but um, I've had more than one client who um, did something that irrevocably changed their lives and other people's lives. Something that couldn't be taken back and couldn't be fixed and uh, had echoes of traumatic events like that in their family history. So in EMDR, it's, a not, it's beyond the conscious thought level. It's going directly into the body. Um, I've had clients that were young boys that couldn't or just wouldn't share the verbal details of their trauma, which was great because you don't need that. Um, and you can use EMDR to go directly into it and process it through the body. And then the thought and the stuff comes later. But y the pain is all that's there. And as uh, you get closer and closer to the trauma, direct directing it in the body, you don't have to do EMDR for this. You can do other things, but th it's just super effective. And it's good to illustrate this process. So there's just pain 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 and then what will happen is a slideshow will start of all the things related to that pain now memory forms in a spider web there's a an object so if you think of a fire truck as you think about a fire truck you'll think about all the things associated with your image of a fire truck firefighters fire stations fire things burning the time you started a fire when you weren't supposed to <laughs> the you know the uh candle flames like you your your memory just branches off it's all connected like a spider web so when you hit the when you process enough of the pain a slideshow starts image 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 everything connected to that event and then 
it's released and it's gone. The memory's still there, but there's no emotion attached to it other than maybe a low level, wow, it sucks that that happened, and also I can go on now. And then you start to get the gifts. So people with traumatic childhoods go through the pain part because that's the part that's screaming, right? That's the part that's bleeding. It's got to be addressed. When that is addressed, then all the happy memories are free to be seen again. The pain overlays them like you would lay one piece of paper on top of another. When the pain paper is taken off, you can see the happy paper underneath. So many people, including myself, had very few memories of positive experiences in their childhoods <clears throat> because the traumatic experiences overlaid all that. And then they would start to remember all the happy times that they had in childhood, even with perpetrators, even with people who perpetrated pain on them. They would remember, oh, there were also some really happy times mixed in there that we forget because the pain has is more demanding, right? It's something wrong in the system. It's a cut that's bleeding in your energy system. Okay, when you do lineage work, it's the same. So if you're doing heavy ancestry work, keep going because on the other side of that is the same experience. Like, oh, I've dealt with all the, you know, suitcases of shit that were handed down to me. Now let's take a look at what the gifts are, what the legacy is um, on the flip side of the pain. Okay, the, the cut's been addressed, it's been bandaged, it's... I've taken the bandage off and it's there's no emotion there anymore. It's um it's neutral. It's a neutral space now. Oh, yeah, my ancestors this and that and this and that. And in my own life there've been multiple perpetrators of different forms of abuse and th those are all neutral now too um because I've done my work. And um uh, and now what are the gifts in all of that in my personal lineage? my personal ancestry for this life, as well as multiple generations behind me on my mom and dad's side. So I think sometimes we forget to go that next step and pull out into our awareness, activate in our awareness, all the gifts that our ancestors have to offer. Tenacity, perseverance, um, creativity, uh, if your family has gone through multiple generations of poverty, for you to be here, they have to be, have been pretty fucking creative. Because nothing will challenge your creativity and resourcefulness, let's say it th this way, build your creativity and resourcefulness, your abilities to resource yourself um, more so than poverty. If you If you don't get creative and you don't get resourceful, uh, you don't survive. So if you're here, then your family, your lineage, your ancestry has loads of things to offer you now on being more creative, more powerful. I'm telling you, it takes a lot of energy to keep yourself poor when abundance is the natural state of the universe. Plants produce abundantly. Animals produce abundantly. As far as I know, we're the only ones that can stop that from happening. And that takes enormous strength. So if you start to commit to using your powers for good, <laughs> to using that strength in different directions than keeping yourself stuck in poverty or pain or shitty relationships or crappy ass jobs or whatever it is that you're doing to yourself or emotional addictions that show up as food issues and over interneting and Netflix binging and all the other stuff that we do not to feel. Can you imagine what you could create? It, you're, you, you're invincible. You're unstoppable. You have I've been recently using this analogy of putting a cork in a volcano because I have a, a, a client who and friend who truly is a volcano and you know pulling the cork out of that amount of power is 
explosive, can be explosive. It, she's certainly strong enough to manage it. But the we're all doing that. We've all got a cork in the volcano of our power. That's, I mean, think about it. Think about what that does to your body when you have a cork in your volcano. All that energy is going to go somewhere. And it takes a lot of strength to keep that cork in. And that cork is food addiction. That cork is uh, scrolling Facebook until you fall asleep and the phone falls on your face. I don't know anything about that one. <laughs> How awful is that? Scrolling Instagram, fall asleep, and have you're woken up by your cell phone falling on your face. How stupid is that? Come on now. That cork shows up as patterns, events that just keep replicating themselves. Different faces, different places, different time zones, different countries. But the theme of it is the same. And if you can identify that and start to squeak the cork out of that volcano of power that you have, Life gets interesting, and it helps you to see that there is gift. There are gifts. There is hidden treasure. There are gems and pockets of money and love and you know help helpful people everywhere scattered throughout your system. It's just that the pain is laying on top of them. The addictions, the energies that you've become addicted to now are laying on top of that and you can't see them because if you can't see them, it's because there's still a little more work to do, a little more aspects to explore. Um, so this, the last few days, it's been like, okay, well, those things are neutral now, pretty much. Now, what are the gifts? What is the legacy, the flip side, the positive side of the legacy that I've been given by being born into this body with this particular heritage, with this DNA configuration? Um, what do I want to inherit now from them? So I think today is a new moon. So I'm going to be doing some meditating today to ask my ancestors to come forward and um, show me the gifts. Uh, show me the gifts in a way that I can feel them in my body, activating them in my body, changing my DNA to now live out and reflect the, the gifts of those experiences the strength the creativity the humor I've got humor on both sides for days <laughs> in case y'all hadn't noticed if you don't think I'm funny I don't know what's wrong with you <laughs> so if you've done the heavy lifting and you feel like you're sort of in limbo choose to start choose to ask your ancestors for their gifts what they're what they're bringing what they have to give you now that you're you know you've lifted off that piece of paper that has pain written all over it and you're available now you're in open space to create a new you by picking and choosing of these gifts that they are standing there offering you like they they're like energetic santa claus you know with all these bags of of gifts ready f to for you to pick and choose from that's the thing about identity creation it, and I've I've done this in the past and I'm in a sense doing it again at a different level um, the world is a buffet of characteristics and a uh, behaviors and attitudes and we really do get to pick and choose from those and create our own identity we did that before we were born. And then we get here and we get to choose again and again and again. And part of the process of awakening is recognizing that you have that power. And then another stage of it is using that power. Like, oh, okay. Um, I can see more. 
And then you go through another experience and you can see even more. In human design, I'm a projector, so I'm designed to see. And I'm designed to guide others to see what, they're, what they can't see. Projectors' auras are pointed, like, with their when they're focused on you they can see you like this beautiful tapestry often I'll see someone and I'll perceive a fog around them that's how it shows up for me in my mind they're surrounded by fog and it's like I'm calling to them through the fog sometimes they can hear me and sometimes they can't hear me and I just have to wait <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, wish them well and hope that the fog lifts someday and that they can see themselves. They can hear health and um, abundance calling them. So, um, what are the gifts? We, we, we typically focus, I think, too long on the pain because we're kind of trained to do that right our culture is trained to pathologize every damn thing which is part of why I was not uh, part of why I was willing to give up my career as a therapist to surrender that because um, it, it pathologizes normal human spiritual awakening and I don't I don't like that uh, it's also very restrictive in the things that you can talk about, the things that you can do to help your clients awaken. So, um, meditate. Ask your ancestors. Okay, I, I see all the pain package here. What's the flip side of that? What can be activated in my DNA now? How can I take the strengths and resiliency and the creativity and the resourcefulness of living in poverty for multiple generations and now turn that toward abundance and success and offering more amazing things to the world? So that's your mission should you choose to accept it. Now I am going to talk about a course that is coming through me for 2020. So if you don't want to hear about another course that I'm offering, you can go ahead and uh, skip on to something else now. Uh, so fair warning, this is not a sales pitch, but it is letting people know what's coming through. So for years, I ran a course named Sovereign Storytellers. And what I meant by that is claiming the power to write your own story to create your own beliefs. It, and and that title didn't work, even though I was so in love with it, because often people thought I was talking about writing books, and it wasn't. It was about writing your internal beliefs, what I call your internal policies and procedures manual that you've been handed from others. Um, so we went through every, we, we used the seven chakra system as a framework, a way to go into each of these energy center, these hubs of different kinds of energy so a, a chakra is a is a is a focal point in your energy system that holds within it certain characteristics and qualities skills and behaviors and sets of information data points if you want to think of it that way it's a hub and in the old system there were seven major hubs and in the human design system there's nine and it and it has thrown me off a little bit because I'm just so ingrained to the seven system. I s first learned it, first experienced meditations through the chakra centers when I was 16 years old. That was like 100 years ago. <laughs> it was a really long time ago. So the nine centers has been a bit of a trip, but I love it because it's more refined. It's more specific. It's much more nuanced. Not that the others weren't. But the language is here for us to understand the nine centers uh, and the 64 gates that are in those centers. Nine hubs with each hub having many hubs. <laughs> so, for example, you, the crown chakra has three gates in it. There's 64 gates based on the I Ching. 
evolved out of the I Ching, let's put it that way. And each of those gates has another bundle of qualities and characteristics. So your crown chakra has its qualities, which are then nuanced by these three gates. If they're active, you always have access to those characteristics and qualities. If they're not active, meaning that when you look on your chart, they're not colored in in any way, they're just there, uh, then those gates and qualities and characteristics are influenced by who you're with. So if you're with someone that has, let's say for example, the 64 gate in your crown chakra, if it's not colored in, and you're with someone who has that 64 gate co colored in, then you get to sort of sponge up those characteristics and use them and explore them and experience them. But then when that person is out of your system, away from you and, and you're not connected to them, then you your access to the qualities and characteristics of that particular gate then is, is inconsistent. It, you can't count on it. If it's colored in, you can count on it. So the example is, if the gate is active and it has a, a color on it, then it's written in ink. If it doesn't have a color on it, then it's written in pencil. So you're with someone and they have it active and they're penciling in that stuff in your system and you can use it. The key to all of this is awareness of what's there. Awareness of yourself, getting a baseline for yourself, your own energy, and then so that you feel when you're interacting with someone who has something that you don't and is influencing you and you can decide if you choose to be influenced or not. This is the soapbox I can get in, get onto about empaths. An untrained empath is a walking wound because they are carrying so much pain that's not theirs. They're not aware of how to know themselves and how to choose. They too, f too often fall into victim thinking patterns that, well, I have to carry all this pain because I'm an empath. Well, that's not true. You, if you know yourself, you, you have choice. We all have choice. We have choices to carry those energies or not. If you have an open gate and you're with someone who has a closed gate and you want to experience that those energies, you can choose to. But if you don't want to experience those energies or the way that they're expressing their version of those energies, you get to choose to just let that flow right on through you. Being a screen, an open screen that things just flow through, uh, rather than a sponge that sponges up energy and then holds it. There's nothing worse than a two-month-old kitchen sponge, right? That's the nastiest thing on the planet. A disgusting sponge. <laughs> you know that nasty smell they get? And you're just like, oh, God. Oh, I should have changed this sponge a month ago. <laughs> and throw it in the trash. Right? We can be a screen. We can be the spaghetti strainer. <laughs> All that energy can just flow right through us. We don't have to be a dirty kitchen sponge. But you have to claim the power of that. You have to claim ownership of that ability. And you have to let go of feeling attacked by everyone and everything around you. You have to let go of looking outward for reasons that explain your pain. You have to stop looking for language to describe your pain in greater and greater detail and make yourself feel worse and worse and worse. I get angry about that, not because I'm angry at empaths, because then I'd have to be angry at myself. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, but I get angry that m more people aren't saying, no, 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 wait a minute. You don't have to be the kitchen sponge. You can be the spaghetti strainer. Hmm, that's some appealing marketing language, isn't it? Come to me, I shall teach you to strain spaghetti. <laughs> Not to be a stinky ass kitchen sponge. <laughs> oh my God, what is wrong with me? Okay, so the course that I Sovereign Storytellers has evolved into, now this name is temporary. But it's journey through the nine centers, owning your ability to create a life of abundance, love, and joy with human design. It's kind of long. 
the trouble with titles and names for things is I love words and I fall in love with the sound of a select collection of words and then people are like what are you talking about and I'm like no it's beautiful don't you get it it has a ring to it well often things that have a ring to them are a little romantic and and not very clear on what you're doing so we're creating a life of abundance love and joy using this journey through the nine centers this is going to be my longest most time intensive course it has the structural elements of sovereign storytellers meaning that we meet for three weeks and then we take a week off and then three weeks and a week off sometimes two weeks off sometimes we spend two uh, and we're going center by center the very first night we get together we you meet your inner guide who's going to be your guide through this process maybe that's a i was calling it your inner storyteller but i think it's just a guide and it can be an ancestor it could be an angel it could be just an aspect of your personality it may show up as an animal who the hell knows we don't know till we get in there the journey through Sovereign Storytellers was always unique for everyone and this will be the same and then we go center by center by center every week deep diving into those centers and the gates that are in them because even if your gate is not active you want to know the characteristics about those gates because you'll feel them coming from others so you need to know them so for example my crown chakra has there's three gates in the crown 64 61 and 63 my the only one of mine that's active is the 64 but I need to know the other two first of all it helps me work with my clients in the in the sense that it gives me the language to tell them what I already see and to hinge it on something so that they can understand it but it helps me too because I know that if I'm feeling suddenly a lot of self-doubt I might be with someone who has their gate 63 active which carries in it a lot of skepticism and self-doubt and questioning and th you know those types of people can be be challenging they'll challenge you well how do you know that they want to know who funded the study <laughs> where those statistics come from what does that mean skepticism is a good thing unless it's turned inward when, when it, and then it becomes self-doubt then it's skepticism toward the self and that's not productive So if you have your human design chart, you can look at those things that I'm talking about. Um, and if you want to go on a six month journey through them in a group environment, which is incredibly exponentially more powerful than doing it by yourself or even doing it in one on one. For this class, because it is so deep and um, the inner, I have to track the whole energy of the group. I don't use a video for this class. It's too distracting for me. Um, uh, often when we're using Zoom or some other video thing, we're focused on the person's, we're taking in the, their appearance and their expressions and things like that, which is helpful sometimes, but not for this level of work. This level we are disconnecting from thought and going directly into felt experience of the body it activates your intuition um, it activates your ability to communicate with your energy system and your physical body but the coolest thing is you get to find your hidden treasures the things that you've you were told that you were wrong about so you hid away these abilities and talents and, and desires. You squirreled them away when you were little. And we find them as we go through the centers. So people find psychic abilities that they buried because their family judged them for them or they saw something that they were too little to understand and it scared them. 
uh, or they had a you know prophetic dream and it came true and that frightened them and so they buried it away a lot of times when you're undergoing a lot of abuse you will bury away parts of yourself to protect them so that you can circle back later and d rediscover them and those energies come forward undamaged by the abuse because you you hid them kept them safe and now you can bring them out and grow them up and integrate them and you become even more powerful often women are struggling with their lives not because of anything that happened uh, but because they in those happenings they hid their power they hid the things that make them alive they hid the things that um, help them create this morning I put a paste on uh, a paste <laughs> I put a photo uh, dang it I put a post on Facebook about Legos so, so let's say you were born and you were meant to create with red Legos and you had bags and bags of red leg Lego blocks or you can think of it as paint if you're a painter but your family said no we only use green Lego blocks and when you would try to use your red ones you'd get in trouble sometimes just disapproval sometimes abuse so you were like whoa well I need to survive so I'm gonna hide all my red Legos and then you grow up and you're trying and trying and trying and trying and you can't make anything work in your life and things are just bulky and hard and exhausting and it's because you were never meant to create your life with green Legos you were meant to use red Legos but they're all hidden throughout your body and as we go through each of these centers we find not in every center but you'll find where you squirreled away your power because having power when you're little often gets you a spanking <laughs> or gets you in trouble when you exercise your power. Look at toddlers. They're like, whoa, I'm powerful. And, uh, you know, adults are like, uh, no, you're not. So tamp that shit down, right? So we have to go back and find that. That not having those pieces of yourself is what d is a, a driving addictive behavior. You stopped learn. You stopped experiencing emotions at some point, and now you're an adult, and those emotions try to come forward, and you s jam that cork in the volcano. And you're like, oh no no, last time when we were three and tried to express this, we got in a shit ton of trouble. We got a grip of of yelling at or physical pain and so no 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 keep that cork in the top of that volcano and then the rumbling underneath and the rumbling underneath is unbearable so we eat ourselves unconscious or we smoke a bunch of pot or we drink or we watch TV we do whatever we can to not feel even when we're trying to feel we're feeling at an intellectual level this is often a problem people think they're feeling but they're describing how they're feeling which means they're not really feeling they're having an intellectual observation a knowing that there's feeling there but not feeling it in the body so there's a disconnect okay so that's what we do is we go through each center and we find those hidden gifts and we unlock the doors to that power where that got shoved in the closet we open the treasure chest it's so rewarding to do this work and to watch people explode and 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 into their own power it's like watching flowers bloom there's a feeling of release when people cut the ropes that have been bound binding them up when people unlock the chain and they fall to the ground when people take the cork out of that volcano it's incredible and the whole group feels it and the whole group benefits from it you cutting your ropes releases your neighbor releases your family line past present and future you doing your own work impacts your entire 
lineage energetically. So that's coming. Those courses generally do best when I start them in January. So I'll be starting enrollment the last part of October, the last week of October, because it is $3,000. And there'll be some payment plans available so you can early enroll and start chipping away. I don't know what the payment plan will be. You can message me, if, especially if we've worked together. You can message me about setting up a payment plan if this is appealing to you. There'll be some early bird bonuses. There'll be some bonuses for people who pay in one payment. Um, you know, all those kinds of details are coming. If you go to the website, thatmichellewolf.com, you can um, either book a appointment with me to get on the phone and talk more about this, um, or you can sign up for my newsletter because I send out whatever class is being offered on the newsletter. Not that often, but those newsletters gener generally are just updates like here, this course is available. So if, if that's offensive to you, then probably don't want to sign up for that newsletter. Because <laughs> <coughs> I'm letting people know what's coming through. Okay, journey through the nine centers, owning your ability to create a life of abundance, love, and joy with human design. So if you're interested in that, let me know or keep an eye out. I haven't written a sales page or anything yet. Um, if you've already done Sovereign Storytellers, this will be quite different um, because it's so detailed about your human design chart. So it will have elements of the same thing as far as us going into the centers, but it's also completely different. All right, so that's what I have for you today take this new moon opportunity and invite your ancestors to bring you their gifts uh, give them back their suitcases of shit <laughs> if you haven't already just do a trade like hey I got a deal I'm going to trade you this suitcase of shit and you're going to hand me that beautiful diamond okay deal <laughs> All right, think less, feel more. You can find me at michellewolf.com. I reactivated my Twitter account because, damn, things are dramatic now. And that's michellewolf11. I have a Patreon page active now that comes with, at the $33 level, it includes the daily 10 Minutes to More Money Voxer group um, and a bunch of other stuff like monthly get-togethers, a forest wheel, energy blessing wheel every month. It's, it comes with a lot of cool stuff. So that's patreon.com forward slash, you guessed it, Michelle Wolf 11. Talk to you later.